So, so, hello and lavas. Welcome to another episode of the Pain Family Ultimate Decades Challenge. Today should be Thursday and it's day one of 1322. Now this year is going to be a little bit heavy with history, so if you aren't really into that, I will mark them with um, history before the sections that are going to be very history heavy, so you can skip those if you want to. Who left this here? Dovile, would you mind cleaning that up? And then you can grab a survey. Itis, you can as well. You've definitely earned it, and yeah. Okay. Now, it's pretty terrible weather outside, but anybody who had the points, I went ahead and purchased the Storm Chaser reward for them so that we can, uh, you know, continue to exist without everything being interrupted by bad weather. Is it a dirty diaper? I don't think shushing is going to help there, pal. Yeah, we've got a bit of a laundry situation currently. Um, <laughs> okay, so the lottery results are in and we didn't win, thank goodness. But it is now Itis's birthday, so we are going to go ahead and have her make a wish. Oh, jeez. Don't worry, Hen. You're going to be okay. Go, Itis, with your little missing tooth. So she's gloomy, but self-assured. You know what? I can dig it. I can dig it. Okay, Itis. Actually, I have a plan for Itis, a thing that I'm going to have her do. So... I'm going to just override that. And we'll go ahead and do her cast while we do the rolls. Somebody mentioned in a comment that they thought that was a good way to do it, and I agree. So we'll do her rolls while I'm doing her cast, and that way you can see both. Okay, so does Ida survive? The only number she cannot roll is a seven. Thank goodness. And does she get married? She does, big time. And how many children will she have? First one doesn't count. Nine. She can have nine baby tries. Oh my goodness. Now, while these guys are just kind of going about their lives, doing their thing, um, I guess we can talk about a few different things. Yes, a few different things, indeed. So, in 1322, there was a new law implemented. It was called the Royal Prerogative Law. And in this law, it's kind of weird because royal fish were declared to be whale and sturgeon, and these all belong to the reigning monarch. If you catch them, if they wash up on shore, anything. And the rule was that the head belonged to the king and the tail belonged to the queen. This is technically a rule, a rule that's still in force. Um, and so that's a little bit of an odd, you know, an odd law that suddenly gets implemented, but what can you do? That's just life, I guess. Sometimes weird laws get implemented. Now, speaking of the royals, the situation with the English monarchy has gotten a little out of hand recently um, because of some things that have happened that are now impacting 1322. So in 1321, Isabella was on a pilgrimage to Canterbury and she stopped at Leeds Castle in Kent, even though it was pretty far out of the way. And it was the stronghold of Badelsmere, who was an ally of Mortimer. Now I'm referencing Mortimer specifically because he rises in importance throughout the story that we're getting into. 
When she got to the castle, only Badalsmere's wife was there, and she was worried enough about what was going on to refuse Isabella entry when she demanded to be let in. So Isabella had her men try to force their way in, at which point the wife had her archers fire at the men, which led to six of Isabella's soldiers dying. Now I've seen it suggested multiple places that this was a political move planned out so that Edward could take on Leeds Castle, which is what happened. He did go after Leeds Castle. He gathered an army and went there. The people supported it because they saw this as a kingly move, um, which they had been wanting from him for a while, defending his slighted wife. Now, Badalsmere's wife had written to her husband and his allies, which included Roger Mortimer, rode out to help her withstand the potential siege. However, Leeds Castle did fall and the wife and the children were sent to the tower and 16 of her men were killed in retaliation. This was kind of the start of the Dispenser War in 1321. And why this is important is because Edward at this point had a whole army and he decided to push on to deal with the Marcher Lords, which included Roger Mortimer. And Roger Mortimer ended up in prison in the Tower of London as well at this point. Something else that happens is that, you know, Edward has his whole army at this point, and he's just taken down Leeds Castle. He's just imprisoned Roger Mortimer, and he decided he wanted to uh, continue on and take out Lancaster. And so he takes that army and he goes after Lancaster. He out his forces outnumber Lancaster's forces quite dramatically. And um, from what I understand, this was a rather anticlimactic and swift battle. Lancaster is then captured in March of 1322. He's put on trial. Um, I've seen it said that it could have been a fair trial that would have regained people's trust in Edward, but it was a complete show trial. He was given no defense, not allowed to speak, and his enemies were the ones trying him. Um, and so when he was executed, it took three blows to sever his head from his body, which um, likely wasn't an accident. Six of his supporters were killed the same day, three the next day, and for months afterwards, the executions continued. Some historians suggest with little more than the king's word as evidence because the dispensers were at that point pulling the strings. So the dispensers had a lot of power at this moment. Hugh Dispenser the Younger was chamber of the council, so he had control over the government and the country's finances. The elder Hugh Dispenser was named Earl of Winchester, and I've seen it said several places that all access to Edward goes through them, which they are absolutely hated for. Okay, so I think that's about um, it in terms of the historical stuff. However, in terms of how this affects us as a family, what is, I just can't get enough of Itis talking to Dovile. Oh, who needs to apologize to who, ladies? Oh, they're close, even though they just had like a a bad interaction. That's fantastic. And again, okay, interesting. Okay, so now in terms of how this impacts our family, it's actually kind of important because since Lancaster is executed this year and is no longer with us, we have to do a new role um, because according to my amended rules, when we have our original Earl, when we start the challenge, um, don't eat that, buddy. Your wife just made you some food. When we do the, when we have, when we first start the challenge and we have our initial Earl, then we start with a 10% tithe to the church, which is pretty typical, as well as owing 10% to our initial Lord, right? However, when our Earl changes, we have to do a new roll to see what our new taxes under this Earl is going to be. And so we are going to do that now while these guys are eating and just being the cutest. So what we have to do is we need to roll a d6. First one doesn't count. And this number, oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be the worst, is going to be our new 10 times tax percentage. So. Our initial Lord only charges us 10%, but after that, it's left up to fate how intense and how horrible your taxes are going to be. So let's see how it goes. 30%. That's really grisly. So from now on, all of the 
things that we sell, anytime we harvest, we owe basically 40% of everything because we owe 10% to the church and we now owe 30% to the new Lord, which is, I believe his name is Henry of Lancaster, who took over after Thomas of Lancaster left the world. In addition, this is really going to affect our ability to um, achieve our goal of escaping serfdom because our way that we were approaching it with the main family is to buy our way out. And to do that, we have to save up enough to pay off the land that we were assigned, including all of our belongings, as well as 3000 for each member of our household, become friends with the Lord and present him with an excellent or rare gift, right? So our property is currently like 40,000 simoleons. Um, however, if your Lord has ambitious, materialistic, evil, mean, snob, or jealous traits, we have to pay two times more the cost of the land, whichever, or the cost of the family members, whichever is more expensive. And unfortunately, when I was checking to see Henry, um, who he was as a sim, he had autonomously aged up with the materialistic trait. So that means that we would owe like 80,000 just for our holding, let alone the 3,000 for each member of our family. And um, I don't know that that's going to be able to happen. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but I feel like we might be better off if we just like... um wait for him to die. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like that might be the most effective way to go is to just wait for him to pass out of this world. Buddy, I don't think you can help with this. I think that this is a uh, an issue that you can't. Can you refill that feed actually? That would be really helpful. And then you, what are you doing? Don't open umbrella. Oh, oh golly. So yeah, you know, a lot of stuff is going on this year and now, now we owe a lot of money basically. So I don't know, this is a bummer, but what can we do? What can we do? Dovile, you're supposed to get married next year and I'd really like if you could help me out by telling me what your type is. Mm. You see her just raise her eyebrow at me? How rude. <laughs> Jeez, this girl, she's like, I do not think so. Esmond, are you trying to go to sleep? Um, okay, you can. I'll give it to you. And then Nox, it's going to be time for you to go ahead and age up. Okay, baby. Also, Sunny, I feel like they keep getting the same... No? Okay, calm. I feel like they keep getting the same things. You didn't inherit not afraid of the world or whatever. Can you please, um, no, that's useless. Please bounce the baby. Nope. Don't do it. Whatever you're thinking about doing, don't do it. Don't do it, kid. Oh my gosh, she got the pain eyes. These are like our father, like Darius's eyes. They're Darius's eyes. They're Esmond's eyes. Oh. Oh. And I did forget to flip and see if um, Vilkas and Danielis are going to end up going to a conflict that's in Lithuania this year. So let's go ahead and do that now. So uh, heads they go, tails they stay. Is Danielis going? He is. And is Vilkas going? He is. Both of them are going this year. Okay. Okay, so we'll leave this night here and uh, catch everyone in the morning. All right, it is the next morning. And you may notice that Idas and Dovile are currently away. Um, they're actually on their way to London because it's almost Gree's young adult birthday. So they're going to go to London to be with her. Um, and so they took off in the night and we'll get there, I think, just in time for her birthday. Meanwhile, these guys are just hanging out back here. Um, Heidi and Esmond are, um, you know, enjoying some time to themselves before the archery competition, which is today. So, um, 
you know, they're working on their relationship and trying to keep each other warm. The temperatures are falling. The baby is down for a sleep. He's so cute. He's so cute. He doesn't like being held. We discovered that in the night. Um, so yeah. Huxley's out just getting some flowers so that we can do the laundry when he gets back because it is a little bit of uh, piling up again. I feel like it piles up so badly because of the diapers. That's my feeling. I could be wrong. This should just be a nice easy day today. These guys will hang out around here. Oh, I forgot that we have animals. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge than I had anticipated, but then it'll be pretty easy. Okay, so the boys have to go to the archery competition. It's that time again. So let's send them off and it'll just be... Oh. It'll just be these two for a hot minute um, while they're away. And then we'll finish up the day by going to London uh, because Aiken the third is aging up to an infant today so that'll it should be pretty cute pretty cute so neither of them won the competition um that's okay even though Huxley's very sad about it we're trying to pay our taxes but we'll see if we can and then we might go ahead and leave these guys here um, and head over to London. Although I will point out that somebody's hunger is dropping pretty dramatically. So it looks like Heidi might be carrying the second bebe, which would be very exciting. Oh, Huxley. Must be hard losing an archery competition. So yeah, I think that we will leave these guys here, and the last thing you'll see in this video should be Aiken the third aging up to be an infant. Uh, maybe his cast, or maybe just him with his family. Okay, so here we are with the uh, with the Aikens, that's silly, with the Brewers, and you might notice that their home is a little bit different than it was before. Um, when I first built their home, it was literally just for the, actually this will be easier to do in build mode, so I can change it to daytime. So when I first built the home, the original brewer a home in London. It was just based off of the money that um, Harlan and Dovili were able to bring with them. So it wasn't based off of, they didn't have very much money. So I wanted to go ahead and update it, especially since Astrid and Aiken the second have got a 11 baby tries. That's a lot. So this is now sort of like their little ale house. It's kind of sad, but you know, we don't really play here that much. And then here's like kind of an outhouse that's right outside as well as like a game table for the gamblers. And here's sort of like their entry room. They have sort of a workspace. It's really been built with kids in mind. So this open area for children and cooking, hearth and home, hearth and family. Their garden's outside. It's a lot smaller now since we don't play here that much. And then when you go 
Upstairs, there's sort of like another little kids play area with a fireplace to keep warm. Um, a puppet theater, a really nice view out into the city. And then over here is going to be sort of the room for the infants so that they don't wake everybody up. And here is Aiken and Astrid's bed chamber. Currently Aiken the third is on the ground. I don't know why. Oh, cause we just loaded in, of course. Over here, we have got sort of like a toddler room. It'll become a child room as well eventually. They have a, a nice little upstairs area, balcony with some kids stuff and um, another chamber pot that they can just toss over the edge if they need to. And then sort of like a children's sleeping area. Although this is also where Alice and the vampire boy sleep currently. And I think there's another, yeah, another little bathroom over here. So it's quite a few changes to this home, but they've got 11 baby tries. So they really needed to have more space than they originally had is kind of what I was thinking. So yeah, this is what it looks like from the outside. I think it turned out pretty okay. Um, and look, just down there, just down there, that house down there, that's where Gree lives with Kennard. So they're pretty close. And I don't know who lives here, but I'm sure it's somebody. Now as well, while we're here, um, Wesley, that's the, that's the guy's name. Wesley aged up to a teenager. Remember, this is Alice and Caleb Vitor's child. Um, he's got quite a look going on. I don't quite know what to make of him, but he's an interesting guy because he aged up to have the generous trait. He already had gloomy, but he's got generous. And now he also has the um, Jane Simpson soulmate aspiration. So anyways, sorry, got distracted. Other than that, our good pal Astrid is, in fact, pregnant again. So she should have, she should go into her third trimester in 24 hours. So I think that the very last thing we'll see this year is Astrid having her next baby, unless I'm mistaken. And that's kind of where we are right now. So you saw Aiken sort of get aged up and his little makeover and this is where the family is right now so Ooh, i know that you don't really need to sleep buddy but i am not planning on doing a bunch of vampire stuff so thank you so yeah okay well i guess we'll go ahead and leave this part here um oh yeah aiken the third aged up to be cautious it's a cautious little guy so yeah, I guess we'll leave this part here. I hope everyone's enjoyed this half of 1322 and I'll see everyone in the second half of 1322. Bye bye everyone. Mm -hmm.